Climate change and greenhouse gas emissions may seem a land-based problem. But with two-thirds of our planet covered by oceans, increasing trade and the movement of cargo means that international shipping also bears a shared responsibility, contributing an estimated 2.7% of global emissions during 2007. If left unchecked, by 2050, ship emissions could grow by 250%, a scenario unacceptable to the shipping industry's regulator, the International Maritime Organization. For them, reversing the causes of climate change has become a challenge that cannot be ignored. Seaborne transport services the global demand for food, energy, raw materials, and finished products. But although the industry is globally recognized as the most cost-effective and energy-efficient means of transport, rising greenhouse gas emissions caused by an ever-increasing demand for volume and speed is a major issue and will most probably continue to be so in the future. The International Maritime Organization is the specialized agency of the United Nations with a global mandate to strive for safe, secure, and efficient shipping on clean oceans. IMO has 169 member states and is based in the United Kingdom with around 300 international staff. In July 2009, the IMO hosted the 59th session of the Marine Environment Protection Committee at its London headquarters. Over 900 delegates from around the world attended this landmark conference with the aim to agree on a package of technical and operational measures to reduce greenhouse gases from international shipping and to hold an in-depth debate on possible market-based instruments to complement the technical and operational measures and to provide incentives for the shipping industry. The session was opened by the Secretary General of the International Maritime Organization Mr. Ephthemios E. Mitropoulos. I'll start with a few words on the theme for this year's World My Time Day, which, as you very well know, is climate change a challenge for IMO2. In acknowledging that climate change is a challenge for IMO2, we must seek an outcome as outstanding as last year's lowest ever recorded level of oil spilled into the marine environment. This time round, our endeavor should aim at adding IMO's contribution to the world efforts to address the phenomena of climate change and global warming, and thus demonstrate once again our undiminished determination to respond to our environmental responsibilities decisively, effectively, and expeditiously. The problem of greenhouse gas emissions has been a pressing issue for the IMO resulting in the publication of the second IMO GHG study 2009. A scientific report that provides the most comprehensive and authoritative analysis of the climate impact from shipping. It is on the basis of this study that realistic reduction targets and means to implement the necessary remedial measures can be globally agreed on and put in place for universal application. It is, therefore, vitally important that these initiatives are adopted. And this has been driving much of the thinking behind the 59th session and the United Nations Framework Climate Change Conference to be held this December in Copenhagen. I think the IMO have been bold in commissioning the Greenhouse Gas Study, for instance. Um, that's the first time we've had um, uh, a description of the different technologies for reducing shipping emissions. Um, and there are lots of ways in which um, the shipping industry can improve its environmental record. And it's in that knowledge that I would encourage the industry and the IMO to be very bold in its proposals, um, because we have the technological capability um, to reduce the emissions, um, but we need to set targets and frameworks and timetables um, to drive that. The GHG report also identified technical and operational measures that could, if implemented, increase efficiency and reduce the emissions rate by up to 75%. The IMO read the science, disseminated and shared the science through its delegates, and began the political dialogue that is critical to 
bringing the industry into the solution space of what, what needs to be done f for all of the sectors, including shipping, to protect human health, to protect the environment, and to manage or mitigate the impacts of climate change. And it's not just science that will bring about change, but also the IMO's role in encouraging and strengthening the cultural shift already in evidence in much of the industry. There is an altruistic element on behalf of the industry in terms of delivering the most efficient, uh, least CO2 emitting uh, carriage of cargo that can be done. Of course, we are but building upon the very long-standing reputation of shipping for being the most environmentally friendly and the most efficient transport mechanism there is for cargo carried in bulk. The task of taking the existing track record of the maritime industry and building it into the most efficient low carbon transport system in the world falls to the Marine Environment Protection Committee or MEPC and its dedicated secretariat headed by Mr. Miguel Palomares director of the Marine Environment Division at the IMO. Uh, the committee at its last session in July uh, came up with a comprehensive package of technical and operational measures to uh, reduce or limit uh, greenhouse gas emissions from shipping. These are being circulated to uh, members and uh, they are also conveyed to uh, the Copenhagen Conference, that is the United Nations uh, Climate Change Conference, to be held uh, in December. This uh, will show the wider community that uh, IMO is ready to act and uh, act uh, decisively on the, the matter of uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions from ships. Perhaps it is better to view the present challenges not so much as a set of problems, but as opportunities. Opportunities highlighted by the IMO in developing an energy efficiency design index for new ships and a ship energy efficiency management plan for new and existing vessels. Also, a reduced market and rising fuel costs have helped to focus attention on how to do more for less with increasing standards of efficiency. Our ship owners are clearly looking for um, the greatest amount of efficiency and we are certainly in discussion with shipbuilders and designers in terms of delivering ships that become increasingly efficient with time. And what the IMO is doing in developing the energy efficiency design index is supportive of that because that is giving us a measure by which we can make sure that new ships are increasingly efficient over time. Shipping is a very complicated industry and it's not necessarily the person who uh, pays for the fuel that ends up bearing the the cost at the end of the day. So I'm hopeful that the publication of IMO's greenhouse gas study will lead ship operators and charterers to look at their fleets and say, where can I be saving fuel and saving myself money? So there are many things we can do and legislation put in place to ensure compliance. But can the IMO persuade all the diverse interest groups to sing to the same tune? Most decisions at IMO are made uh, by consensus. And this uh, bears testimony to the deep-rooted spirit of uh, compromise and willingness to cooperate that uh, uh, prevails among uh, mem IMO member states. While finding consensus uh, on the climate change issue among uh, member states uh, may have been demanding in the past, I am quite confident that after the Copenhagen conference, the renowned IMO spirit will prevail and the organization will be able to come up with the right decisions and achieve the desired objectives. I strongly believe that only through coordinated international action can we prevent the irresponsible attitude that caused the current climate crisis. The IMO's main task has been to develop and maintain a comprehensive regulatory framework for shipping. Its remit today includes safety, environmental concerns, legal matters, technical cooperation, maritime security, and the efficiency of shipping. The result is a comprehensive body of globally applicable conventions, supported by hundreds of recommendations governing every facet of shipping. It is global in the terms of its uh, member states, but I'm also thinking about its relationship with the industry, 
which is extremely successful, and its understanding as a body of the way that the industry works. And you, when you're dealing with a global industry, you have to regulate it via a global mechanism. And this mechanism that the IMO has developed over all these years is demonstrably successful. And that is surely the way to go in terms of delivering greenhouse gas efficiency measures. Hopefully, the early 21st century will be marked down as the moment when climate change and its causes passed from theory to positive action. Clearly, the problems facing the world cannot be reversed overnight. But if those with most to contribute are drawn to the same banner, then there is reason for real optimism. The message we should send all over the world should be clear. IMO is ready to lead and we call upon all our partners to join in this most worthy campaign with a sense of urgency, a responsible attitude and common purpose. Much good work has been done, but much more remains to be done.